so we can proceed to the next question. Um, okay, for, for part B, question one. What is the taxonomic unit for any level of hierarchy? Baru kita tengok tadi apa dia? Taxon. Taxon. Okay, taxon. Right? Tadilah uh, domain, um, apa? Family, genus, semua order kan? So that, that is what we call it as taxon. So complete the Linnaean classification in the table below. Okay, so it gives you the scientific name. Pantera tigris. Right? So, genus, apa dia? Macam mana orang tahu do, genus ni? Scientific name, saya saya explain lebih semula eh. Scientific name of any organism, dia ada two part name kan? Okay, scientific names. So, the first name adalah nama genus dia. Okay, the second name dia adalah specific epithet. Macam mana macam mana epithet? Okay, epithet. Okay, uh, um, specific. Specific epithet. Alright. Specific, eh, bukan species epithet tapi spe specific epithet. Sekejap saya cek bersemula. Ha, specific epithet. Two part name. So, Pantera adalah nama genus. Tigris adalah nama specific epithet. So, genus dia apa? Pantera. Pantera. Okay. Make sure bila awak dalam exam, when you are writing species name or genus name, you underline. Okay. Ha, you underline. Sebab bila awak tulis nama uh, genus pun, you have to italic kan sebenarnya if you are typing. So, when you are handwriting, you underline the genus name to be safe. Okay. So, domain apa? Domain tadi kita belajar ada tiga je kan? So, dia di bawah domain apa? Eukarya. Eukarya. Yeah. Right? Eukarya. Okay. So, question C. Explain why introduction of new species may threaten biodiversity in Malaysia. Macam, macam saya cerita tadi, eh, hari tu. And you cannot simply throw away your exotic pet or bela ular yang foreign from Malaysia, exotic kan, or bela rattlesnake for example, you bela um, anaconda for example, okay, dia dah besar atau tak boleh nak support dia and then you go to the other forest and then you lepaskan dia macam tu je. That is not appropriate because it may threaten the native species. Okay, that lives in that habitat that you lepaskan yang exotic species tu tadi. That is not appropriate and you cannot do that. Right? So, explain why introduction of new species may threaten biodiversity in Malaysia. Sebab apa? The increase? Apa? Increase? Competition. Competition, kan? They increase competition, they increase predation. Can the new species can become new predator? Uh, in that in that uh, in that habitat okay so habitat asal dah ada species asal uh, dia dah ada contohnya kat situ dah ada monyet kat situ dah ada dia punya predator dia sendiri dah ada dah ada harimau for example okay dah ada uh, python kat situ kan okay? and then you tambahkan lagi predator dia Right? You tambahkan lagi predator dia. So, you increase competition. Okay? You increase competition, you increase predation, you increase competition for resources. Okay? So, that is one of the uh, side effect okay? uh, of introducing new species. One point. You increase competition, you increase predation. And then, number, a point, dia nak dua eh, dua marka. What is the other effects of introducing new species? The new species can become host for certain ataupun foreign disease kan. So, it may spread new disease okay to the habitat okay. It may spread new disease or new, uh, new parasites uh, to that habitat okay. Apa lagi? Upset. So, altogether dia akan apa? Upset balance of local ecosystem ataupun uh, upset 
uh, balance of natural ecological uh, apa dia, dia upset sorry upset natural ecological balance okay upset natural ecological balance okay ataupun disrupt food chain kan dikacau food chain kat situ ataupun dikacau food web kat situ disrupt trophic level right so those are the consequences of uh, introducing new species uh, to 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 our ecosystem all right to our biodiversity okay number uh, question d describe the action taken to conserve endangered species such as elephants uh, maximus in malaysia dua markah yang paling yang paling obvious apa ada ex situ conservation zoo kan ex situ conserve sorry conservation such as zoo negara ha, macam tu kan zoo negara ataupun um, kuala gandah kat kuala gandah right okay so um, so itu point yang pertama ex situ conservation or keep animal out of their natural habitat such as keeping the animal in zoo Second adalah in situ conservation such as uh, dalam taman negara contohnya kan. Taman negara ada elephant centuries. Right? Okay so maintain the the animal in the natural habitat. Macam sapilog. Eh sapilog itu uh, orang hutan. Ni dia nak elephant. Okay elephant. Elephant dekat taman negara. Okay. In situ conservation. Gajah tu duduk dalam hutan atau tak payah kacau dia. Ya, macam tu kan. So in situ conservation. And then dua markah. And then apa lagi yang boleh letak kat situ? What other methods that are taken to conserve elephant species in Malaysia? Ex situ ada tahu ada zoo. In situ ada tahu ada taman negara. Dalam taman negara tu ada gajah. Jangan usik dia. Lagi? Law enforcement. Uh, law and enforcement kan. Ada undang-undang kan. Law and policy enforcement. Yang keempat, campaign kan. So ada banyak campaign untuk apa? Untuk pelihara gajah kan. So NGO programs or campaign to educate the society and uh, also campaign to spread awareness to the community. Campaign lah kan. Campaign by NGOs. Um, whatever lah campaign right. To, to conserve our elephants, right? So, so far do you have any question? None? Okay, so we can proceed to the next question, question two. A, in the taxonomic system, okay, in the taxonomic system first developed by Linnaeus, organism are given two part name, yang saya cakap tadi lah, two part Latin name. Okay, state one advantage of this binomial system. Satu je, dia nak apa? Enable scientists to communicate efficiently. Okay, so scientists dekat Malaysia, scientists kat Singapore, scientists kat England, okay, tahu yang apa, yang mangga tu adalah mangifera nama saintifik dia dengan dengan nama saintifik dia so scientists from different different location from different countries know that when they are talking about certain organism they refer to the scientific name okay. so baru dia tahu okay itu adalah specifically dia bercakap pasal um, buah mangga by referring to the to the scientific names ataupun dia, ber, dia specifically cakap pasal Uh, harimau tu kan. So kita panggil harimau. Orang putih panggil tiger lah. Takkanlah kita nak panggil, nak cerita pasal harimau. Kita 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 guna harimau word kan. Kita cakap tiger. Tapi kalau kita pergi Afrika maybe dia tak guna tiger. Dia guna dia punya istilah sendiri. So that's why every species needs to have their scientific names. Okay so so that it allows scientific to communicate efficiently to when they are describing certain certain Uh, species okay and then uh, number two is to avoid uh, another point that you can include in your answer to avoid confusion between organism because every organism will have their own set of specific names okay every organism have they, their own specific name so this is to avoid 
confusion. Okay. Um, okay, so okay lah. And then uh, num uh, another, another point that you can include in your answer is to help in biodiversity documentation. Okay, so probably list can all the endangered species through their scientific names. You can list all the threatened species, vulnerable species, uh, where you can find all these species. Okay, so you 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 document all this information uh, for for every species using using their scientific names. Okay, and then another. And uh, another advantage adalah bila dah classify, dah document all this organism uh, and then you can do uh, strategies to protect and conserve endangered species kan. Or dah document kan species apa yang endangered, kat mana boleh jumpa dia kan, kenapa dia endangered. So you all, you have all that information documented and then you can plan strategies to conserve all these species that are endangered or vulnerable or threatens. Okay. Okay, so those are the advantages of binomial system. So, satu je dia nak. So, you can list any. So, saya bagi tu supaya jadi nota awak lah untuk revision. So, it, it, it can be asked in the objective ataupun dia boleh suruh list a few more in, in the question. So, you have to know. Right? Tapi ingat eh, bila soalan, dia suruh list ataupun state one, nak bagi satu je. If you list more, dia akan ambil the first answer sahaja. Alright? So, maksudnya kalau awak list jawapan awak yang pertama, jawapan awak yang kedua, jawapan awak yang ketiga, jawapan pertama salah. Tapi jawapan dua dengan tiga betul. So, macam mana? Dia ambil jawapan yang pertama sahaja. Alright lah. So, please, you have to know exactly what is the answer, right? So number two, what is the six kingdoms uh, system classification suggested by Wu's based on? So how do you classify organism based on six kingdom system proposed by Wu's? Cara dia macam mana? Tadi saya dah cakap six kingdom based, based on what? Evolution and molecular genetic study. Okay, so based on evolution and molecular genetic study. So, awak tengok proses evolusi dia kan, awak tengok uh, apa, uh, genetic study dia macam mana. So, basically you extract genes, you extract uh, DNA from this organism or you extract RNA from this organism, you get the uh, sequence and the genetic sequence and then from there you construct phylogenetic trees to see how this organism evolve. Kan, daripada species A, macam mana species A tu evolve jadi species B and C. Ha, macam tu kan. Okay. So that is evolution. Right. Okay. So evolution tu tak, tak silap saya diberdasarkan oleh juga adaptation organism tu pada environment. Kan. So bila the, when the organism try to adapt to the, the, new, the new environment that organism to migrate from the previous habitat, for example, they migrate, they can develop new feature, new adaptation, so they become a new species. Alright, so that is a simple, maybe I guess a simple way of understanding evolution, okay. Okay, so, um, kalau saya nak bagi contoh, saya takut tak, tak tepat, tapi, sebab saya bukan dalam bidang ni, tapi saya pernah faham Um, ada satu wolf species ni kan, wolf species dia duduk dekat satu area kan kita panggil dia area A species wolf tu species wolf A contoh je lah kan serigala tu so species tu dia migrate satu dia migrate kat tempat yang sejuk satu dia migrate kat tempat yang panas desert kan desert eh desert ini dia pergi kat tempat yang ada snow contoh right so dia migrate So, species A migrate ke tempat yang ada snow, dia, dia jadi species B. Okay. And then the other one, they migrate ke tempat yang desert. Desert panas kan? Snow sejuk kan? Alright. So, bila dia, bila organism tu migrate dekat tempat yang snow, obviously, species tu akan develop fur. Yang ni akan de, uh, apa, long fur. Long fur. Ini short fur. Ataupun tak ada fur langsung. Right? 
So dia akan dia akan adapt to that new environment and they may become new species. Macam mana yang nak tahu dia dia jadi species yang baru bila species tu uh, dia boleh dia boleh membiak kan. Bila species tu boleh membiak they can reproduce then they are considered as new species kan. The, anak dia boleh membiak juga. Ha, bila anak dia boleh membiak juga so they are then considered as new species right. So that is how one organism, one species become another species. Simple way of understanding it, right? Okay. So question, question three. Table one shows the classification of Panthera uncia. Okay. Uh, a big cat found in mountain, mountainous region of Central Asia. Complete the table below. Okay, tadi kita tengok kan dia punya level dia atas atas kingdom ada apa? Domain. Okay, ha, so aku ingat eh, domain, kingdom, phylum. Lepas phylum apa? Class. Class. Lepas Class. order, order lepas tu? Family. Family. Ingat eh dia punya turutan dia. Nampak soalan dia tanya. Okay, so kingdom Animalia. Domain dia Eukarya lah. Kita saja je letak nota kat sini supaya jadi revision terus. Okay, so kingdom, animalia, phylum, chordata, class, mammalia, order, carnivora, family, felidae, genus, panthera, species apa? Unsia. Panthera unsia. Ha, tulis balik nama saintifik dia kat situ. Okay, panthera unsia. Unsia. Itulah sebut dia. Okay. Pantera Uncia. So make sure when you are writing scientific names because you are maybe dalam exam nanti awak tulis tangan ke. Bila, kalau yang tulis tangan, underline kan. Make sure second name huruf kecil, first name huruf besar, yang lain tu huruf kecil dan underline kan. Tapi kalau siapa yang jawab exam tu dia bertype, dia type, make sure italikkan sahaja. Okay. So nampak genus pun dia 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 italic kan. So so let's say kalau dalam exam nanti kan uh, genus punya box ni dia blank kan nak kena isi. So make sure when you writing the genus ni you italic kan pada yang type, pada yang tulis tangan you underline kan juga. Okay. So question B figure 1 uh, is part of the phylogenetic tree for Philidae. Okay. So usually how do you construct a phylogenetic tree is based on the genetic study. Okay, you look at the DNA sequence, the similarities of DNA sequence between organism for example. Okay, then from there you can construct genetic phylogenetic trees. Okay, for Philidae. Philidae ni dia bawah, dia jatuh bawah family kan. Peringkat uh, Philidae ni pada peringkat family lah. Alright. So, maksudnya dekat sini adalah Philidae lah. Dekat sini adalah node atau common ancestor yang start dengan family. Alright? Okay. So, sini species lah. Kan? Species. So, you have uh, in the in the family of Philidae, you have Panthera leo, Panthera unca, Panthera pardus, Tigris, Uncia and Neophilis nebulosa. Okay, nebulosa. Right. So those are the species under the family Philidae. Dekat node ni, kan ni, this is what we call it as node. Node, node ni kita namakan dia sebagai common, common ancestor. Okay. Nenek moyang sepunya. Maksudnya asal-asal dia adalah daripada individu yang sama. Macam tu lah. Okay. So, uh, common ancestor. So now question number one, using the information in figure two, figure one, state two cat species that are likely to be most closely related. Satu marka. So dia nak dua. Apa dia? Most closely related. Lion and jaguar. Ah, lion and jaguar. State two cat species. Saya tak sure sama ada dia terima tak kalau awak jawab guna nama tempatan ke tak. So, gua. Okay. 
So, uh, lion and jaguar, you can write the scientific name. Pantera, Leo and uh, Pantera, Honka. Alright. Kalau order tulis Pantera ni, kan order tulis nama full name, second order boleh tulis uh, as initial macam tu. P, Honka. P, Tigris. Kan? So, tapi first name dia mesti tulis full. Alright. So, lain. Ada ada lagi tak? Yang mempunyai common ancestor yang paling dekat. Tiger and snow leopard. Ha, tiger and snow leopard. Nampak? Nampak common ancestor dia? Sama. Ni pun sama kan? Lion and jaguar common ancestor dia paling dekat lah. So either you answer Pantera Leo ataupun Pantera Ongka ataupun Pantera Tigris dengan Pantera Huncia. Right, so ada dua, two possible set of answers. Right, okay. So based on branch point, branch point to note lah. Sorry, notes, ataupun common ancestor. Explain why clouded leopard, okay, this one here, and snow leopard belongs to different genus. Kenapa? Lepas species apa? Genus kan? Sebelum species, sorry. Sebelum species ada genus. Okay. Lepas tu, uh, family. Perutan dia. Species, genus, family. Ya, yeah, species, genus, family. Alright. So, kenapa? Soalan dia, kenapa snow leopard and clouded species belongs to different genus? Because these two species, okay, do not share common ancestors. Do not share the most or the recent common ancestors, okay. These two species do not share the most, most and most recent uh, common ancestor. Tengok eh. Common uh, snow leopard, clouded uh, clouded uh, leopard ni. Ni dah satu note kan? Ni satu note tak bertemu lagi. Baru bertemu dekat uh, uh, family. So dia jauh kan? So maksudnya common ancestor dia sangat jauh. So that's why they are considered under different different genus. Okay, they do not share the most recent common ancestors. They do, they are not classified under the same genus because common ancestor dia sangat jauh. Okay. Right. So boleh eh? Faham? You all faham tak phylogenetic tree ni? Faham. Um. Okay ha. So okay lah. Alright. Okay. So next question. Question three. In binomial nomenclature. Okay binomial nomenclature. What are the two taxonomic unit used to write scientific names of organism? Ha, saya dah cakap tadi. In order to construct scientific names of organism, dia ada dua. Two part name. Apa dia? Satu apa? Genus. Genus. Okay. Nama yang depan dia genus. Nama belakang dia tadi apa? Specific epithet. Ah, specific epithet. Make sure aja betul-betul eh. Specific epithet. Bukan species epithet eh. Awak jawab species epithet salah. Awak jawab epithet salah, salah. Okay. Specific epithet. Number one is genus. Alright. Okay, so B complete the diagram on the uh, on the three domain system. Ini pun senang je. Dah, 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 dah tadi kan dah tengok. So yang bawah ni adalah archaea. Okay. So domain eukarya, bacteria, archaea. Uh, in the domain eukarya ni kita ada empat kingdom. Saya tulis sebab semula. Plantae Animalia, fungi, okay, protista. Bacteria kingdom dia adalah U, bacteria, okay. Archaea adalah Archaea, bacteria. So ingat eh, so the one that I wrote here are the kingdoms under the three domains, under each domain, okay. 
Eukarya, Bacteria and Archaea. Okay, question C. Explain three significances of using binomial nomenclature and hierarchical classification in organism grouping. So, ini rasanya. Kita dah patah. Dah cover dah tadi, kan? Three significances. Soalan dia, dia, dia olah lain sikit. Dia olah lain sikit tapi kita dah cover dekat soalan yang mana? Dua A satu Roman. Dua A satu Roman. Yang ni eh? Ni? Ha, kan? Ha, so kita dah cover. Yang ni nampak tak? Sebab tu saya saya cerita apa keseluruhan advantage of binomial system tu tadi kan? Com, uh, avoid confusion, uh, allow for apa um, um, documentation kan? And then uh, apa lagi tu tadi? Allow for conservation. Uh, efficient uh, communication between scientists. Uh, so, ni dia nak satu. Soalan lain dia boleh tanya tiga. So, you have to know all the advantages of binomial, nomenclature uh, and also classification ni. Alright. So, ada tiga. So, saya repeat eh. Efficient communication between uh, scientists. Avoid confusion between organisms. Okay, because no two organisms can have the same name. Uh, help in biodiversity documentation and the fourth one is to develop strategies for protection and conservation of endangered species. Alright, so question D. Figure 3 shows uh, species diversity in two communities. Okay, species diversity. So, community 1 and also community 2. Ada berapa species? Satu species burung, satu species tak tahu ini maybe uh, burung yang kedua. Burung yang ketiga, kiwi. Ha, so, ada four species. Okay, four species. Yang ni pun sama. One, two, three, four. Four species juga. Tapi, kalau species uh, dekat dalam komuniti dua ni, dia punya number of individual ah uh, evenly distributed. Dua, tiga, dua, tiga macam tu. Tapi, kalau species yang pertama ni, walaupun empat uh, species, tapi species yang pertama ni lebih abundant. Berbanding dengan species Uh, burung dalam ni, kiwi dengan yang ini, ada one each sahaja. So, which community shows the most diverse? Satu ke dua? Higher species diversity. Dan kenapa? Is it community one or community two? Two. Dua. Hmm. Community two. Macam mana orang nak tahu Komuniti mana yang lebih diverse? Oh tengok eh. Walaupun uh, bilangan species dia sama, ada empat. Tapi kalau yang lebih diverse adalah bilangan individual pada setiap species tu, taburan dia lebih kurang sama. Okay, taburan dia lebih kurang sama. Bilangan individual dia lebih kurang sama. Tapi kalau kenapa community one ni not considered as high uh, species diversity? Oh tengok eh. Species yang pertama ni, Walaupun bilangan uh, individu dia banyak, okey lah. Satu mati tak bagi kesan. Uh, yang ini saya bagi species B lah. Species B, species C, species D. Yang banyak ni species C. Okay. So kalau species C ni mati, mati sebab dia satu je individual. So maksudnya kat community one ni tak stabil. Yang mana nanti dia akan jadi tiga je species yang tinggal. Okay. So that's why we cannot consider species one as have higher species diversity sebab dia tak stable. Okay. Satu mati tinggal tiga lagi sikit lah. So that's why we choose community two. Okay because um, for, for the first mark is community one. Sorry community two markah yang pertama. Markah yang kedua adalah your explanation. Explanation should be the number of individuals okay, in each species is equally distributed. Okay. Uh, the, ataupun uh, the number of individuals are roughly the same. Alright? Ataupun the number of individual uh, in one species in community one is a lot more compared to the other one. Compared to the other species here. Okay? Uh, so, you have to give your reason as to why you choose community one compared to community. Sorry, that's why you could choose community two compared to community one. Okay? Ingat eh, high 
species diversity banyak species dan setiap individual tu banyak juga right uh, so that is high species diversity so that's uh, end of biodiversity question so do you have any question on biodiversity that you would like to ask 